Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the HL7 escape characters. To start with, let's take a look at an HL7 message with an escape character in it. Here we have a very simplified version of an HL7 message. It's a register patient message for John Smith and he lives at the corner of High Street in Maine. As you can see in this HL7 message, instead of an ampersand between the words High Street and Maine, there's a backslash T backslash. Why is this? So his address, which is corner of High Street in May, would normally have an ampersand between it. But inside HL7, ampersands are used to represent part of the message structure. You can see on the right hand panel, the PID 11.1 .1 represents the street address. But if I was to alter the street address by placing in an ampersand, you'll note that the ampersand has converted that value into two subcomponents representing different parts of the message. Effectively, we've corrupted this HL7 message so that anyone reading the address would end up with just corner of high, while the ampersand main would be left out. The purpose of escape characters is to replace those structural characters with temporary placeholders that represent the character it's supposed to be. Then when it's extracted out, the actual character can be put into its place. So in this example, the ampersand should be replaced with the backslash T. Let's take a look at all the HL7 escape characters. And so we see here a list of the characters and what their placeholders will look like in an HL7 message. We can see a pipe has a backslash F backslash, the carrot a backslash S backslash, the tilde backslash R backslash, ampersand which we've already looked at backslash T backslash, the backslash itself has a placeholder, the backslash E backslash. And finally, we've got a carriage return, and that is backslash dot br backslash. Although what I'm showing is the official HL7 format, I've seen a lot of variation out there. So don't be surprised if you see angle brackets with br in them or other syntax representing a carriage return. And so if you're constructing an HL7 message, you'd be expected to convert any of those structural characters into their placeholders. If you were converting out of an HL7 message into a different format, you'd be expected to convert those placeholders into their structural character. In fact, if you're converting from one message type to another, say HL7 to XML, you might find you have to convert one escape character to another. For example, backslash T backslash in HL7 would need to be converted to an ampersand amp semicolon inside of XL. So how do we do this in a real world scenario? Let's take a look at some sample CSV data. Here we have a simple list of patients. We've got their ID, their name, their date of birth, and their address. Scanning through these, you'll see most of these are just random addresses. But the first one has our corner of high and main placed in it. An ampersand is perfectly fine in a CSV message. So what's going to happen to that when we convert it to HL7? So I've put together a quick sample inside of HL7 Suits integration host, where we'll convert that CSV to an HL7 message. So let me start by editing the sample. Okay, what do we have here? We have a directory scanner reading in files from this directory. It's looking for CSV files. And I've already populated the message template with the headers from our CSV file. So now we need to convert that to HL7 and send it off. I'll add another activity in. And we're going to send that off to a common HL7 destination, a TCP receiver on port 22222. All the defaults are great for our purposes, but what we do need to do is now provide it with a message template. So let's paste in the message we had before and we'll use that as the template for our new message. Inside of integration host, it's super easy to map two different messages together, and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways of doing it. You'll see on the right hand side, a bindings list has been generated from the headers we provided for the CSV. All I have to do is drag those into the HL7 message, like so. Here's the ID. The patient's first name, their last name, their date of birth, and finally the address line one. Behind the scenes, HL7 Soups mapped those values into variables, and we've placed those variables into position inside of our message template. As the values went out of the CSV into the variable, they were automatically decoded. So it doesn't matter on the source of those messages, the escape characters will be removed by the time they've gone into the variables. For instance, if the source was an XML file, any ampersand semicolon would have been replaced with an ampersand into the variable's value. So the variable will be populated with the actual value. 
And so now when we write it back out, we'll have to tell it to escape our variable values for HL7. And I do that with a feature called encoding. I just right click on the variable, go down to the encoding and select to encode the message for HL7. You'll notice there's two HL7 encodings along with encodings for the XML, CSV, JSON, X64 and creating a URL. The encode with double quotes will also put double quotes in if a value is empty. I'm going to discuss this in another video. So for now, we're just going to choose the standard HL7 encode. So now we expect that ampersand to be replaced with a backslash T backslash. Finally, I've just got the date of birth and I'm going to format that for HL7. And that's our HL7 message created. Let me just quickly show you another way we can do this and how to encode it. So I add another activity. So I'll keep all the same settings. And this time I'm going to put back in my message template again. I'm going to map the two through transformers. So I click on the transformers tab and you can see it's rendered a list for both the incoming CSV data and the outgoing HL7 data. It's a bit tight on the screen because I've zoomed in for recording, but it's simply a matter of mapping between the two message types. So I map the ID to the patient ID, expand out the patient's name, and map the first name to the given name, the last name to the family name, the date of birth with the date time of birth, and the address line 1 into the PID 11. And so here we've created a mapping between the incoming values and the outgoing values using transformers. When you're using a mapping transformer, both the incoming message and the outgoing message are automatically encoded for you. So no additional actions are required for me to get that encoding. And that would be the same whether I was mapping from CSV, JSON, HL7, XML or other formats. It's very simple and straightforward. So I'm going to quickly save this and let's test it out. Uh, we can see our workflow is running and our receiver on port 222 is ready and waiting. And so we head over to the file system and I can drag in my sample CSV into the processing directory. And we can see our 10 messages have been processed. Let's take a look at the logs and see what's happened. I'll expand this first one. And we can see the first line of that CSV has been picked up with the ampersand in the address. And we go to the first send and we can see it, the ampersand has been replaced with a backslash T backslash. And in the second one, the address has also been replaced with a backslash t backslash. I had missed setting the date to the right format, but that's okay. All I have to do is right click on the source path and select the format the date to the HL7 date format. So quickly to reiterate, the HL7 escape characters are there to prevent the corruption of your messages. And inside of HL7 soup, every time you extract a value, the escape characters are going to be removed for you. And inside of HL7 Soup's tools, when you read in the values, it will automatically swap the placeholders with the proper characters. And when you write them back out, anything using the mapping transformer will automatically add back in the escape characters for the appropriate message type. But if you write it out as a variable, you will have to right click yourself to add that escape character in. The reason for this is variables are allowed to update message structure where mappings can't. So I hope this video has helped you. If it has, perhaps consider giving us a like or even subscribing to our channel. We've got lots of HL7 videos coming out all the time. Don't forget to take a look at the Getting Started Tutorials for Integration Host and visit our tutorials page. Feel free to ask us any questions you might have or contact HL7 Super Support.